2016 saw the fourth staging of the Paul Laurie Golf Centre Challenge and the nine-hole course was looking in fantastic shape. A remarkable achievement considering the storms that hit the centre early in the year. We were 20 odd feet deep in water uh, here in January. So the staff and the builders and everyone's just done a wonderful job getting it back on its feet. And you'll see from the pictures when we play it today that the golf course is probably better than ever. And despite the threat of a summer shower or two, this year's opponent, Jean van der Veld, once again helped to ensure a large crowd through the gate here at the golf centre. Every year has been absolutely brilliant, to be fair. We've had quite a few people obviously come. Um, it was important that we made it free entry and free car parking and Eric from Farm Foods was kind of quite vocal on that, that he wanted people to enjoy it, to come and I would challenge someone every year. So to have the players of the calibre of Jose Maria, Paul McGinley, Darren Clark and now, you know, Jean, it's just kind of a way to start playing again full time on the, on the senior circuit having just turned 50. So it's uh, great to have them. Uh, I'm looking forward to the match. We've known each other for pretty much 25 years. Uh, you know, we campaigned on tour. Uh, obviously, Carnoustie was, uh, was a big moment for, for both of us um, when such a, a sporting, I say, confrontation happened. Um, so I came here some years ago, three, four years ago, uh, first to do a, a gala dinner to, to raise some money uh, and, uh, and then to play nine all here, which I did. And that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. For my foundation dinner, he came, he flew, we flew him in from Hong Kong a few years ago and, and uh, I think he just blew everyone away with kind of what, what he is. And, and what he is, he's just a, a down-to-earth, lovely guy that I've always really gotten on with and uh, obviously no one will ever forget the Open in, in Canoostie. Well, in 1999, these two were at the peak of their powers playing for the biggest prize in the sport, but how would John assess his game these days? How about the following, the next question? Uh, I've been, uh, listen, I retired in 2011. Uh, basically, I've been, you know, running the French Open men and female uh, since, since 2012. So uh, the last five years have been dedicated to still work around golf, but uh, more on the, on the organizing level than, than playing. And to answer your question, I've played an average of 12 rounds a year. So with this year's challenger getting his excuses in early and uh, Finishing off the media requirements for the day, speaking to local television and newspapers, it was time to head down to the first tee, where of course Paul enjoyed a hole-in-one in the very first challenge match against Jose Maria Alathabal. I wonder if that was going to be repeated. It's asking a lot. First to tee off, as always, the challenger. Now, for a man who's not playing too often, let's see how he's striking the ball. Very nicely, I would say. I don't know if he's been underplaying the amount of golf in his life at the moment, and especially with a shot like that. What a fantastic opening from Jean van der Veld. Richly deserved warm round of applause there. And let's see what the host can do. He'll be doing well to get inside that, but of course we've seen him do it before. And, well, ordinarily you would say a very good shot, which indeed it is, but well outside Jean. And a solid start from these two. Paul, of course, he'd been fighting injury over the last couple of years. But no sign of that as he rolls in to start with a birdie. Fresh up the road from making the cut down at Troon for the Open Championship. And of course we would expect Mr Van der Veel to follow him in. Well, are both players going to go under par straight away? And they are nicely done. Two twos. What a fantastic start. And a tip of the hat there. Well, we're keeping score, but I think uh, Mr. Van der Veld has chosen the option of match play. It's always down to the challenger to decide the final format. So, all square at one under. And another fantastic tee shot. Here on the second. And Paul, well, we're being treated to some lovely stuff here at the moment. The course, as Paul said, in magnificent condition. And the crowd's out. And the sunshine trying its best to fight through the clouds. And could we see a 2-2 start from the host? 
Certainly could. Two under after two. And I can tell you that Jean missed his putt. So after two holes, Paul Laurie was one up. And as we move down to the third, there was a wayward tee shot for the first time from the challenger. A tricky chip up from just inside the water hazard line, actually. And that putt wouldn't drop. Paul got his par, and it was two up to Laurie. Well, the score stayed the same over the fourth and fifth holes. Paul two up at two under par as we move down to the sixth. 127 yard hole. And Paul flicking up a nice shot. Good bit of backspin there to be pin high. Now, Jean looking to uh, eat into that lead if he can, get a hole back. Still strikes the ball very nicely, it has to be said. A bang on line, just a couple of yards short. And the crowd's t-shirt weather here, very warm in Aberdeen. Now, interesting stuff going on here. How many people playing, albeit for a bit of fun, a competitive match, would stop and give their opponent a quick putting lesson? But that is exactly what Van de Velde was doing there. Jean seeing something that he thought he could improve in Paul's putting stroke. And there you go. Well, fantastic stuff there. I'm not sure if he's available for lessons. Uh, what does Paul make of that? <laughs> yes, delighted. Well, he certainly helped Paul's game. Now, I wonder if he can practice what he preaches. He needs this putt to drop to stay just two down. Oh, just catching the edge of the hole. Well, perhaps it was a misread, because he hit it very nicely. But that is three up to Paul, and we're now on the seventh tee. And, uh, well, I can tell you now that uh, Mr. Van de Velde has negotiated an 18-hole match. So the pressure isn't quite on as much as it would be if it was Dormy 3. But Paul playing a very nice tee shot. The ball rolling back towards the hole here on the seventh. It's the shortest hole on the course, but a double tier green can sometimes prove a problem, but it wasn't to be for our golfers. Two pars, the score stayed the same. As we move on up to the eighth green, well I say green just to the side of the green. Jean a little bit wild with his tee shot, holding on to it to the left, but a very nice recovery shot. The crowd impressed. Paul needs this for his par. And it goes. Nicely done. He stays at three under. But it's the match play score that counts. Uh, could John tidy up here? Get his par. Stay at just three down. No, it stayed out. And I wonder if uh, Paul might offer John a putting lesson. Well, perhaps not. So there was four in it. Both players parred the ninth and the first the second time around. So we're back on to the second. Paul still four up. His tee shot here again, very nice. He got a two here in round one. Now, Jean, he's really going to have to make a move if he's going to try and peg back this lead. Nicely done. Impressive scoring, it has to be said, by Paul Laurie. Three under for his first nine holes. Still three under here. And, well, what have we got here? 15 feet, perhaps, 20. From Van de Velde, and it is in. His first birdie for a while. And, well, I'll tell you, that was good enough to win the hole. Got him back to level par. And got him down to just three behind. As the players moved on up to the third. Just short of 150 yards long this hole. Jean pulled his tee short in the first round towards the water. But this time around, safely onto the green. Nice and close again. And good stuff. The challenger beginning to show some good form. Could Paul respond? Get over the green. Come on. He's ushering it up and well. Very, very close to each other. I'm not too sure who it is to putt first. Two good tee shots, and well, it's the challenger. Now, Jean, he's three down, he's level par, but that's a great putt. Back-to-back -back birdie twos. He's now one under for the day. 
And Paul needs to see this in <laughs> to see if he can stay at three holes ahead. Oh, nicely done. Some quality stuff from the golfers there. Two twos. Paul still three up as they head on to the fourth for the second time. The fourth one of the longer holes. Best part of 180 yards. But John, once again in the position where he's really going to have to start doing something as the holes are running out. He's three down. Six to play. And a nice attacking tee shot there over the flag, up the back of the green. Now let's have a look at Paul's response. Oh, and a wonderful tee shot there from the host. And, well, Jean's birdie putt stayed out this time. So Paul, he's about six foot away. This could move him to four ahead. It is in. Four up. And it's looking good for the host. Five under par he is for the day. And Jean van der Velde, well, he's really needing birdies to try and catch up with Paul. And at a par three that's over 200 yards, not too easy. And his tee shot found the bunker. This could be it for the match, but a wonderful recovery shot. What a fantastic touch there from the Frenchman. The hole was halved, and that meant that it was uh, four up to Paul Laurie with four to play. Here on the sixth for the second time today. Nicely onto the front edge of the green. Now Jean really needs inside that. He needs to get a two here if he's going to keep the match going. Ah, well, he's given himself a chance. He's certainly making the host putt first. The Sun's managed to stay out now after a light shower. But it could all be over if Paul Laurie sinks this putt. <laughs> Just catches the edge of the hole. Well, he's still five under for the day. He's four up. And that means that Jean van der Velde has to sink this putt to keep the match going. What can he do? Well, he's managed to sink a couple to keep it going. He's one under par for the day. Can he get to two under to keep it going? Again, just missing on the right. And with that, the match was over. Paul Laurie, four and three victor for the Paul Laurie Golf Centre Challenge 2016. And after the golfers made their way round to the ninth hole, along with some of the spectators and the media, it was time for the presentation. And only fair to ask our challenger first what he thought of this year's winner and his experience here at the golf centre. You know what, you, you got to expect every time I played against him or with him, uh, you, you just look at the flag and it's, it's actually pretty boring. You know, he's just piping every flag and uh, I would say that he knows the golf course here quite well, but still, uh, he told me, you know, the handkerchief was out just before we, we played. Oh, I can't put anymore. I missed from... 18 inches he didn't miss anything that was you know within 10 feet today so yeah it is, did you no you didn't no no I, I, to be fair i kind of putted very nicely today okay, had a lot so. of good shots and putted very nicely indeed he did putt well today and is there a reason behind that yes putting lesson which was very good of him um kind of changed it a little bit and started rolling a few in so that's that's the beauty of golf that is what everyone keeps and rightly so keeps saying that whether you're playing in a tournament or whether you're playing a bounce game, golfers will always help golfers. We've got a competitive situation going on today and my opponent was giving me a lesson. Isn't that nice? That's it for the Paul Laurie Golf Centre Challenge 2016. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next year.